Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Creations by Suying. I'm coming to you with another card today from the Simon Says January 2018 card kit. Forever my... What is it? Forever... For, oh, favorite person. And we are going to be using um, some water coloring. I'm, I'm experimenting with water coloring and I don't know too much about it. I really like the process and I'm gonna recreate this. Um, I don't have that many embossing powders. I'm gonna be using Recollections Detail Embossing Powder in Snow. So let's go ahead and get started. I hope I can um, tell you guys or explain myself good. So we're going to be using Versamark and the Open Heart from that Simon Says stamp kit. And that kit is called Really Like You. Not, not the kid, I'm sorry, the stamp set. So let's get our heart. We're gonna stamp. We're gonna stamp a few. What is wrong with this one? Okay. We're gonna stamp a few hearts. And we're gonna do some masking. For those of you who don't know what masking is, it's basically overlapping I don't know if you guys can tell it looks like these stamp these stamps are these hearts are on top of these hearts but th these on um, this one it's gonna be a little bit closer because the paper is a little bit shorter so let's go ahead and get started with that so before we get started let's use our EK success anti-static tool this just avoids the embossing powder getting stuck so let's use our grid to help us. So we're going to do our first heart here. And I'm using watercolor paper because we're going to be using a watercolor technique. So we're going to do that one. Then we're going to do one in the middle. And then we're going to do one on the side here. It doesn't have to be perfectly spaced out. All right, so I'm gonna close this up and I'm gonna bring over a coffee filter and we're gonna open up our embossing powder. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with Prairie Paper and Ink, Amy R, but I absolutely love her videos. And she does a lot of embossing techniques, and I've picked up um, like the desire to emboss from her. So we're just gonna use a little paintbrush here and get rid of some of the the powder that kind of got stuck there before we use our heat gun. And this looks pretty good. Perfect. So let's scooch this over there so the heat doesn't ruin and blow it everywhere. So this is a heat gun for those of you who don't know. I'm sure everybody's probably seen one of these. This is from Recollection. Oh, that was my Martha Stewart. Scared me. This is from Recollections. And anybody who knows me uh, knows I love Damask and pink and black. I even made a Damask um, sheet for my tape gun. And my glue gun is also this pattern. So without further ado, always try to heat up your heat gun a little bit before bringing it to the paper so it doesn't warp that much. I'm going to bring this up here and see if we can get it to change. I 
don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it, but there it goes. There it goes. And there we go. Let me just make sure. Perfect. I like to heat it on the back a little bit also. All right. All right. So then what I did is I created three masks using post-it, uh, like a post-it note. I stamped it off and fussy cut it. And we're going to go ahead and cover up those three hearts that we stamped. It's a little hard to see because we stamped it white on white. But what I like about the embossing when you do, um, when you do watercoloring is that it keeps, especially for like me that I'm a newbie at this, it keeps the watercolor, like it's like a little channel. It keeps the watercolor like in line, even though I did a bad job here, but I'll explain to you guys what happened to me there. But let me see. Can you guys see it? It's like a little... Like a little barrier so the water doesn't run everywhere. All right, so now that we have our masks, what's what it's going to look like is that these hearts, even though we stamped them first, they're going to look like they were stamped last on top of these two hearts that we're going to do here. It's a pretty cool technique. I learned that from, from Amy R. from Prairie Paper and Ink. All right, so we're going to use our embossing tool, I mean, our anti-static tool here. All right, and that's just to avoid any Versamark or any, um, not Versamark, um, embossing powder. All right, so we're going to ink that up with the Versamark. And we're going to overlap it and stamp. And we're going to do it again. And we're going to. stamp like I said it doesn't have to be completely centered it doesn't have to be um, perfect all right so we're gonna bring over our coffee filter and our embossing powder again and we're gonna cover that and shake off any excess all right, so let's set this aside for a second and funnel this back in here and close this before we spill it everywhere because I tend to be a little accident prone. So the good thing about the coffee filters is it helps you funnel it back in super easy. So there we go. And I have a big paintbrush that I just used to dust off my work surface here. All right, so now we're going to lift our masks before we heat set this. There we go. Put that over there. Get rid of this one. And one more. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is you can save these masks like on the back of your packaging. Because, I mean, you took the time to cut them out. And they're reusable a few times. So that way you save them. All right. So I'm going to tap, 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 tap. Again, before I blow with the um, with the heat tool, and it looks like it's pretty clean. So let's go ahead and heat up our gun a little bit, and go ahead and heat that up. Bye. 
it's a little hard to see on camera because since we're stamping it on white oh. and remember I like to heat the back a little bit perfect all right so now we have our design and let me show you guys a close-up of what that looks like okay and like I said, I'm new to watercoloring. I'm not 100% sure that I'm going to love it. I mean, so far, so good. So I went with very cheap watercolor paper, which I know that there's better watercolor paper. And the better the quality of your, the products that you use, the better results. But I wanted to try. So I found this at Joanne's for like $4.99 and it's Strathmore um, 100. What is it? It says it here somewhere. Uh, does it say it? I don't know what pound this is. I thought it did. But um, it is watercolor paper. I just don't know how many pounds. I don't think it says it here. But um, so I wanted to try that. And then I bought this watercolor set. And it was like $4.99. Like I said, I didn't want to spend too much money without thinking or knowing if I was going to like it or not. However, I'm going to be honest. I came up with a different... These two hearts were done with the watercolor set, and I don't like the results of that. So, I've seen these watercolor pens, and they're a little expensive, and I don't feel like I should buy them right now because I need to, I need to play around with this um, technique for a while and see if, you know, I truly am going to love it and and stick with it so what I did was I have an acrylic block here and I have these markers I don't know what kind of markers they are they're from EK um, success I bought these years and years and years ago in Target um, it says here 10 15 2012 I guess that's the date of manufacturing so I'm not lying when I said years and years and years ago so I see that a lot of card makers take their watercolor markers or or other types of markers and they use it and they scribble on an acrylic block and pick that up with one of these um, water pens. And this is from Tim Holtz. Uh, and the tip is, it's a brush, it holds water. And the tip is um, stained, but it pretty much comes out clear. Like, I've, I've tried to clean it, and it, it's just stained. There's nothing I can do about it. So, what I'm going to do is, like I said, I have no idea what kind of markers these are. So, I'm going to scribble on my acrylic block. And then I'm going to take and squeeze my... Um, my brush here and put a little puddle of water there we go all right so let me dry off my tip a little piece of paper that I have here and I'm gonna wet and then liquefy that marker and then we're gonna bring it to our watercolor paper I am going to, I go very slow here because, remember, I'm new at this. So, I'll be honest, I am really, truly falling in love with this technique. So, I do plan to get better quality products for this technique in the future. But like I said, I, I, I've done it a few times and I just, I was scared to spend a lot of money on something that maybe I wasn't going to like. But I'm going to be honest with you, I am loving this because I am loving more and more um, to color in my stamps. So then for a watercolor look, you can just make it a little bit darker towards the top and lighter towards the bottom. So I really liked the way that the marker looked instead of the water, the actual watercolor um, set that I had bought. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat set this a little bit because you can see it's wet. So we'll just dry it just to help it along. And we don't want any of our colors bleeding. But I just feel like it's smoother. The look that I got from that. Like I said, I'm sure I'm doing a million things wrong here because I'm new at this. But I'm just sharing with you guys what I'm learning as I go in case you guys are interested. Now, in the interest of not making these colors bleed together, I'm going to go ahead and move to the middle one and then skip one. So by the time I get to this one, this should be completely dry. So our middle color is red. Same thing, we're going to scribble. And we're going to, I guess I could have just left the, there we go, the water that was on there. All right, so I'm going to make sure my brush is clean. And we're going to grab a little bit of water and wet that marker. And we're going to repeat the process. It's a little time consuming, but for me, it's therapeutic. But I don't know if you guys can see what I mean about the, the embossing helping like channel the water and keeping it inside the image. So especially if you're a newbie like me, at watercoloring and it's very helpful it helps you kind of like stay within the lines all right so we're gonna do the same thing we're going to heat set this I'm not using too much water because I don't want it to be I want the color saturation to be there Again, I like to heat the back just to help the paper not warp, especially since we're adding water to it. So that's how the red came out. I feel like the more I do this technique, the more I like it. So let me just do that so I can preserve that water from over there. Let's wipe off our red color here. And we're going to go now with purple. So obviously the more water you add, the lighter the color. But I don't like to water it too much down on the on the acrylic block because remember this has water in it. So once you add the brush tip to the watercolor, it's going to continue depositing water and making it lighter. If you guys can tell here. And you see like the white here, it got a little bit of the purple on it. So I'm just gonna wipe it off with my finger, like the white from the embossing. I always push in towards so that you don't smudge the outside of. Your embossed image. All right, there we go. So I hope you guys can see what I mean about the water that keeps depositing from the the water pen and it creates like like a lighter color. And you can go back and and add a little bit more until you're happy with, you know, your variation of color.
purple seems a little bit harder to clean off so I'm gonna clean off my tip and try to go over that white that I kind of messed up a little bit there to lighten it the white part of the embossing so I don't want to mess too much more with it because I don't want it to get on the outside so I know that this is gonna be a little bit of a long video but I wanted to show you guys this process in case you guys were interested in and starting like water coloring or at least experimenting that dried real fast All right. now one of the things I want to learn to do in 2018 is edit videos so that I can speed up um, this part of my videos where it's just repetitive stuff but then again some of you might like it I hope that 2018 is treating everybody well so far I'm just gonna continue I felt like the purple was like so far the hardest color to to blend on here. I really really like this orangey color. I feel like that one was a lot easier to blend. Alright, let's get rid of this. Perfect. Heat set it. Oh no, I smudged. You see guys? Well, the only way to fix that is add a little bit of... How did I smudge that? A little bit of white gel pen to that area let me get the pen rolling there we go well that didn't work too well but that's okay. What are we going to do? It smudged a little bit. All right. And let's do our last color here, which is like a turquoise. Blue was very easy to blend. 
How funny because in the other card that I made, the orange also um, bled. All right, so I'm cleaning off my little brush here. And let's just clean off our black. And there we go, brand new. All right, guys, we're almost done here. And we can put this card together. All right, so this is basically, that's right, I don't need to heat set it. This is basically what we have. And you see what I mean about masking it? So it looks like the first hearts that we stamped are actually on top of the last two that we stamped. I really, really like that. And you know what I'm going to do since I'm a little bit on the bummer side that I... Um, got that smudged there let's just go ahead and go around and let's just fussy cut this and that way actually I think I'm gonna like it a lot better on the pattern paper that I chose to use So guys, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video now and just cut this out. I don't want to bore you guys, and I'll be right back. All right, guys, we're back. And I went ahead and fussy cut the hearts. I think they came out super, super, duper, duper cute. Um, let me see something here. If I have... I think I might have a little bit left here. I'm not 100% sure. This is the white. This is not it. Where did I put it? Where is it? Oh, here it is. Wink of Stella. Our clear shimmer pen. And I'm just going to add some shimmer. To our hearts and this shimmer makes a world of difference I love anything that shines all right let me show you guys. Can you see? There you go. So that's going to go here. But before we do that, the sentiment we're going to use is you're my favorite. And we're going to do it off of the same watercolor paper. I'm just going to put it in the middle here. And we're going to use... Our acrylic block and I'm gonna use this dye ink pad all-purpose stamping in magenta from Ranger I found this at my local Tuesday morning and that store is closing and they're opening up a new one a few blocks away in I think it was March I think they said or April and um, everything was on clearance and I got it for a dollar I got this magenta color, which matches perfectly with the card base that we're going to use. Okay, since I haven't used it, I like to stamp it off a few times. All right. So let's go ahead and stamp that up really juicy and put it on our watercolor paper, just so it matches the same type of paper I guess I don't know I guess you really don't have to but yeah I I couldn't pass up that deal all right I'm not a hundred percent happy with how that's stamped so let's go ahead and turn it around and do it again all right that's nice and juicy maybe it's the texture of the paper maybe I should do it on regular cardstock if I don't like it on this, we're going to move on to regular cardstock. I think 
I moved it. Yeah, it's the it's the watercolor paper. But no fear, I have regular cardstock somewhere here. <laughs> here we go. I have a scrap piece. Here. All right. Just do this one more time. Guys, I promise I'm going to learn how to edit videos. That's one of my New Year's resolutions, even though I don't really like resolutions, but I want to learn to edit videos. All right. So let me go ahead and stamp it. Or maybe it's because it's a dye ink. I don't know. Aren't they all dye inks? I'm not sure. I'm not, oh, okay, that's a lot better. It was definitely, definitely, definitely the, um, the watercolor paper. All right, so let's just go ahead and grab, where is it? My bigger scissors here. Let's cut out a piece that's going to fit through my cuddle bug. Okay. Set this aside. And we're going to use that, um, those rectangles that I got from China. And we're going to cut off a little piece of washi tape just to hold it in place while we run it through our die cutting machine. Washi tape is the best for this because it doesn't like peel up your paper. And it's fairly inexpensive. I've used tape before and it like rips up the paper. All right, so I'm gonna use my cuddle bug. And let me get my plates. So I'm using an A plate, the magnetic platform for the cuddle bug, a B plate. I'm gonna add my paper with my die, and another B plate. I like to put it in skewed a little bit so it doesn't like. All right, so we're gonna run it through. Let's go ahead and close this up. And pop this right up. And that's the perfect addition to our card. All right, so let's put this puppy together. We're doing an A2 size card, but we're going to do it landscape as opposed to portrait. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stamp on the back my personalized stamp. I said I like to wait and give it an opportunity for the ink to transfer onto the paper make sure you're adding even pressure my next thing on my on what I want is uh, misty all right so this is our pattern paper it's from that paper pad that I showed in my last video that came in my Simon Says January 2018 card kit Which it is from, uh, let's see, do, 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 do. the pebbles forever, my always. All right, so we just added ATG to that. Let's bring this over. Make sure the letters are going in the right, the words are going in the right direction. And I didn't tell you what this was cut at, did I? I sure didn't. The card is A2 size, so we already know that's four and a quarter by five and a half. And this layer is doo -doo -doo, five and a quarter by four. All right, so let's go ahead and adhere our 
our hearts. I like leaving my mistakes in because, not well, one, I can't, <laughs> I can't um, edit, and two, you know, it was a, I, I happen to think now that it happened, and I look at it this way, it was a fortunate accident. Because I think I'm liking this a lot better. Alright, so I'm going to add it towards the bottom half here. There we go. I have my adhesive eraser. Let's get rid of some of that. Oh my god, you guys, that looks so darn cute. It kind of looks like, um, I don't know, it kind of reminds me of, like, subways and, like, the restaurant that it has that paper that it's all written on. So super cute. And I was going to pop this up, but I do not have my Pop-Tarts, my pop dots here so we're just gonna go ahead and adhere it straight down all right so we can go ahead and put that right there perfect Oh my god, you guys. I really, really, really like this card. So that'll be my card for today, guys. I'm not going to do the inside because I've kept you guys here long enough. But I just wanted to share with you. And you know what I'm going to do? Just for something special. We are going to... Um, add glossy accents to the pink heart. I'm sorry, to the red heart. And that'll give it some... Okay, what is going on here? You see, everything I want to do for you guys. Can you tell I haven't done a video in such a long time? Okay, guys, what? Let me try this. It's a little thicker. There we go. All right, so let me go ahead and just add this on here. And that'll be our, our main, our main heart. There's that hard part. Hold on. Let's use, get rid of that. And let me smooth this up. There we go. Now we're in business. So let me just go ahead and clean off right here off the white because I kind of just wanted it to stay within the like the stitching part. And right there. All right. Now we're ready, guys. Alright guys, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for joining me and I will be back soon with another card. Have a wonderful time and if you've stayed with me this long, thank you so much. Please give me a thumbs up and let me know that you enjoyed watching a full process card so that I can do, you know, a few in the future for you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day and I will see you next time.